Good afternoon, welcome to Meets Rod Shop. I'm Jason. Today I've got my 1970 Mach 1 Mustang. It's an M code car, automatic air conditioning, um, power brakes, power steering, 351 Cleveland. Uh, what we're doing is we're pulling the transmission out and I'm gonna put an AOD in its place. I want some overdrive. I don't like driving the car on the freeway right now. You're turning too many RPMs up at speed. So, but while I got the engine out, or excuse me, while I got the transmission out, I'm also gonna pull the engine out. I need to change the exhaust manifold gaskets. They're leaking, so I'm gonna go back with a Remflex gasket, uh, recheck the valves, go through the valves, valve train, and just uh, adjust all those again. But uh, no, you don't have to pull the engine to do that. But for me, trying to get my hands in there, trying to get the exhaust manifolds out and slide the gaskets in, it's a pain in the butt. So I just assume pull the engine. It doesn't take that much longer to do it for me anyway. So what we'll do first is we'll pull the top half of the motor off. What I'm talking about is the air cleaner. We'll pull the air cleaner off, uh, air cleaner base, drain the radiator, pull the radiator. We'll roll it on the lift, pull the trans out, roll back on the ground, pull the engine out, and then go back in in reverse order. So I'm not gonna walk you through all the little stuff. I think you guys understand how to do that. Um, if you guys got any questions or anything, you can always put, you know, put it in the video or whatever and I can answer you. So, all right, let's go ahead. Let's get to it. One of the problems I've found with this car and along with other cars I've owned is your exhaust manifold bolts back out or your header, header bolts will back out as it goes through heat cycles. So I'll show you the cheap way that I fix my header leaks or my exhaust manifold leaks. What I do is I'll take the header bolt or the exhaust manifold bolt and I'll drill through the head. And uh, today I'm using a cobalt 1 16th inch drill bit. So I'll chuck these up either in my vise. You can hand drill them. You can put them on a drill press and drill them. Uh, drill them. I just use my mill just because it's a lot easier to line everything up. It's a constant speed. It's easier for me to do it this way. It's quicker. Um, so what I'll do here, I'll bring you in close and you'll see where I've got the, the bolt chucked up in a vise and I'll go ahead and start 
drilling all the way through. And then once those get drilled through all your header bolts, you'll install the header and you'll safety wire the bolts to each other so that they don't back out. It's an old aircraft uh, maintenance thing. So, but I'll get you in here close so you can see what's going on. I apologize for the lighting. I know there's a window behind the mill, um, but uh, that's the best I can do. So I'll put a little bow lube on there, a little bow lube on the drill bit, and I'll just slowly start drilling my way through the head, head header bolt. Again, you don't want to go too fast. You're not trying to win a race. You'll see it's got a nice uniform hole right through it. It's small enough that you can fit a 32 thousandths piece of safety wire through there and then safety wire your bolts together. So I'll show you how to safety wire once we get all these drilled up. It's gonna be quite some time to do 16 bolts. So let's get at her. Well, I guess one thing I wanna show you, on the driver's side, I put these polyurethane mounts and these are prothane mounts. I put these in maybe a thousand miles ago. Um, I had originally had my um, exhaust manifolds jet hot coated. I was having an overheating problem with the car, so I it felt like it was under hood heat. So I wanted to try to cut down as much heat as I could. So when I put the new jet hot coated, uh, ceramic coated exhaust manifolds on, I put these prothane mounts on. Well, this is the driver's side mount. And I noticed over time, like I said, it was less than a thousand miles. The engine, when you take off, the, the driver's side was really lifting up in the hood. And I said, man, it almost looks like I got a, a busted motor mount. Well, it's not broken per se, but it's melted. And I don't know if you could see it, but I can move the mount in itself. And if you look real close, you can see the polyurethane has melted and it's because the header comes so close to the polyurethane that it overheated the polyurethane and allowed this mount to start moving and wiggling around in there. So I had to go buy another set of 200 plus dollar mounts. But what I've done is I've taken a little piece of sheet metal I bent up. This is actually an old oil drum is what this is, a lid. So I've got the new mounts. And so what this will do is this will slide up under the mount and it will help protect the heat from getting to the polyurethane part of these. But uh, I already did the driver side, which was my big concern. The passenger side was fine when I took it off. Um, I don't think I have as much of a problem here because of the way the exhaust manifold is routed. You don't run into that uh, heat soak with the uh, with it because the way, like I said, the way the exhaust manifold's mounted. So we'll go ahead, we'll get this motor mount installed and then I'll bring you back in and, and show you the, the passenger side exhaust manifold in there. So let's get her done. All right, now we've got the uh, exhaust manifold cleaned up. We've got the motor mount installed. I've got the little shim done and uh, I've got a picture of it. I'll put it up uh, somewhere on there. I'll post it uh, here in a second, but uh, we'll go ahead and Get this exhaust manifold started. And again, I know you don't have to, as I'm speaking to you over my engine lift, I feel like Wilson out of uh, uh, home improvement. But um, again, you don't have to pull the engine to change exhaust manifold gaskets, but with the engine mount that was melted, um, all the wiring I wanted to clean up and everything else, I felt it was a lot easier to uh, go ahead and just pull the engine out change these exhaust manifold gaskets on the bench, make those templates for the, the heat shield for the engine mounts. And also I wanna open up the valve covers and, and re relash all the valves and clean up the valve covers because they're pretty nasty. So just uh, for those reasons is, is why I chose to go ahead and pull the engine uh, at the same time as doing the trans. Again, you don't have to, but it makes it a lot easier. At least it did for me. And I'll get you a Remflex gasket number here in a second as well. I like the Remflex gaskets. I, I've never had one blown on me. They're, they're good gaskets. I know they're, they're a little pricey, especially uh, against a normal header gasket or a manifold gasket, but they work extremely well. All right, according to the interwebs, it says uh, the exhaust manifold uh, torque on this 351 Cleveland is 18 to 24 foot pounds. So it's a good thing I got a calibrated elbow.
quick. As always, you want to start in the middle, work your way out towards both ends. Click. Click. Oh, you want to hear my new style torque wrench? Beep. Look at that. Just upgraded torque wrench from a click type to one of those new digital beat types. That's fantastic. Boop. Beep. Click. Switch back and forth between digital uh, and old school. Beep. All right. Go back through, double check them. They will uh, loosen up after you let them sit for a little bit. So before I safety wire these, we'll let them sit overnight or let them sit for a couple hours at least. Let the, let the gasket kind of compress and then torque them again. Otherwise, you're going to end up safety wire and have to cut the safety wire off in the car to retorque them, and it's just it won't work out. So let's let them sit for a little bit. All right. Actually, now that I'm looking at the Remflex package. It says in big red letters here that the guy opening the box should have seen, but I guess I'm blind. It says suggested torque is 20 foot pounds on these Remflex gaskets, and the part number is RFL-3007. So it's RFL. Dash 3007. That's for your 351 Cleveland's 70 to 74 four barrel carb Boss 302 HOCJ square port. So um, 20 foot pounds, which I readjusted my elbow. Um, and then we'll come back in here. We'll safety wire these. I want to change the plugs while I've got it out. Like I said, relash the valves. Um, and then we can shove this thing back in the car and hook the AOD up to it. So, oh, uh, one thing I do want to mention. Um, I noticed, which I should have noticed, I guess, when I put this on the car, but the exhaust manifold was contacting these top bolts on these clamshell style prothane mounts. Um, so what I did when I installed the new ones is I took the top two bolts out and flipped them over so it's a little lower profile up top and uh, that should stop them from contacting the exhaust manifold. So I figured I'd let you know that. Keep an eye out for that if, you're, uh, if you've got these mounts in uh, standard exhaust manifolds. So. All right, let's get to it. All right, now that we've got the headers, excuse me, exhaust manifolds. Now that we get the exhaust manifolds torqued down, we got the bolts in, I got the uh, Remflex gaskets on. Now we're gonna go in there, we've already drilled the heads of the bolts and we're gonna safety wire them together so that they can't back out. Um, I will say that the safety wire method is my preferred method for keeping bolts tight. Um, I don't find anything works as well as safety wire does. This is, a, this is an old practice that comes off of the uh, aircraft world. Um, so what I like to do is I take some 32 thousandths stainless steel safety wire. I take uh, safety wire pliers. So this is a six inch safety wire pliers that are locking. So you'll close the jaw onto the, you'll pull down on this little tab thing there and that keeps them locked so the jaws can't open. And then while it's holding on, you clamp it onto the two pieces of wire and then you'll pull this handle out. It's just easier just to show you. So you'll clamp it on to what would be both pieces of the wire after you slip it through the loop. Clamp it down, you'll pull these, this handle, and you see that they twist. So that twists your wire for you. Then when you get done, unlock them, and then you'll cut off the uh, extra wire after you pigtail it, which I'll show you. Uh, I guess the finished process will probably be the easiest way. I'll try and bring the camera in here to show you as the process goes on. Safety wire is an art form. It's not something that comes naturally. It will take some time. So if you don't make a perfect safety wire the first time or even second time, don't fret. Just cut it off and go again. Um, as I said, this is an aircraft world type thing and it, it keeps bolts together and tightened on uh, F-15s and F-22s and everything else when they're pulling nine Gs on a regular basis. So if it can work on an F-15, which is the greatest proven military uh, fighter in the world, by the way. Uh, don't get me wrong, F-22 is great and awesome, and yeah, it'll kick the F-15's butt in the real world, but uh, 106 to zero air-to-air -air kills on F-15's, so a little fact for you. But uh, so what you'll do is you'll safety wire the head of one bolt, you'll bring the safety wire over to the other bolt there, and 
the easy way to tell which way your safety wire is to wrap around the head of the bolt. Say this is the head of the bolt when you're looking at it, and if you snap your finger slow, the way your middle finger snaps around your thumb is the way you want the safety wire to curl around. And what that does is it keeps tension on the bolt, or if it does start to back off, it can only go so far because the safety wire is locked to the uh, other bolt in this case, or it can be locked to a uh, part of the structure or something like that. So I'm gonna bring you in here. We'll go ahead and start on this. Let me see if I can't get you closer. We're gonna get you in here real close, so close that uh, your eyes almost get wet. That's how close you are. All right, let's get to it. I'm gonna try and not block the view with my fat fingers, but so you can see the, the holes drilled in the head of the bolt there. It's a little bigger than what I wanted, but I got another one here, so we'll go ahead. So I'm snapping my fingers, so you want the, the wire to curl around this way on this bolt. It stops it from backing out this way, and we're gonna come up to here. So let's go ahead and we'll insert the safety wire through the hole. I will add that technically the way you're supposed to safety wire is by hand, but I'm lazy if my beer belly didn't tell you that already. All right, so we'll go ahead, we'll get the safety wire in here, get it started, pull it through. Like I said, you wanna split it about half away, you'll see. That's where we've got that now, so. So you can see the safety wire here. Now I'm gonna go right about here is where I wanna start the twist at. And I want this to be twisted counterclockwise on this bolt. So you see as I pull, see the safety wire player spinning? And then you're gonna see you got this huge gap. Well, that doesn't work worth a crap. So what you do as you're twisting these by hand like this, you wanna make a big loop with it too. So that will tighten up that big open loop. Now you don't wanna to go too tight. I think it's eight to 11 twists per inch for 32 thousandths, but don't quote me on that. So you see it's tight now. So we're gonna bring this over here to this other bolt right here. So let me go ahead and turn you a little bit just so you can see. Now I am going to hand twist this last bit. And I've already screwed that up. See that's the problem. This ain't tight enough down here. That needs to be tightened up. But for this application we're just going to live with it. So I'm going to switch back to here. And we're gonna go right there, I think, is how we're gonna do this. Now, it's not the, the right way to do it, I will tell you that. It's not the professional way, but let's face it, I'm not a professional. So there's that. Let's tuck it back around. Get my head in there, and I'm actually going to do a big no-no here, and I'm going to reverse this a little bit. So it's good enough for government work. And then you find the hole. That's what she said. And you slide the safety wire through there. Nice and taunt. And then the way I'm going to twist this up. Again, clamp it down. And then here you can really see the you're doing that. Get a nice uniform twist on there. You'll cut it off. I usually go about half an inch long worth of safety wire, and then you want to pigtail this because otherwise it sticks you. You'll be bleeding all over. And the next guy that works on your car, which is probably you, you'll be cussing yourself for being a moron. And then, pow, you get your safety wire here. So that should. It's a little loose. Like I said, it's a little loose, but it's good enough for good enough for government work. Yeah, it's a little loose. A little loose overall, but for a car, I'm happy with this. Aircraft, no, I'd be cutting it all off and redoing it. So, but that's it. So you see your safety wire there and that'll stop this bolt from twisting and that one from twisting, that will keep it locked together. All right, now we'll go ahead and we'll safety wire the rest of these. And like I said, this is not the perfect safety wire here. It looks like hot garbage. Looks like it was ate by a coyote crapped over a cliff, you know, but uh, it's good enough for my application. It'll stop the bolts from spinning. If this was real world aircraft, I'd be redoing that, but it's good enough for now. So let's go ahead and knock out the rest of this. We'll just speed up time. You should be wearing, I want to add that you should be wearing safety goggles when doing this because uh, safety wire, it'll, it'll take your eye out. It'll shoot your eye out, kid. It'll take your eye out and it can really, really mess you up bad, so. 
but I'm a rebel. If you can't tell by my awesome shirt. Or my awesome shirt, as my niece says. All right, that's that one. And as my Uncle Bob says, that's good enough for the girls he dates. Oh, this one really looks like hot garbage. Well, that's good enough. Well, I tell you, if my old supervisor, Tech Sergeant Heath, saw this, oh man, he would kill me. I'm butchering this. Oh my God, horrible. Absolutely, I mean, this is, I ought to go to jail for this. This is hot, hot garbage. I'm just, you know what, I'm just, we're just gonna cut that one off and we'll just start right over again. It looked, looked that bad. I don't even know how to describe how bad it looked. How bad, actually, you know, I can describe how bad that one looked. That looked like my 11th grade haircut. Yeah. All right, let's try this, let's try this again. Well, if you won't go in that way, we'll go this way. We're gonna make this look extra ugly. I will say this is better, but not by much. And this is neutral as hell too. So, so when you say your safety wire is neutral, that means safety wire is going through the bolt and it's not really keeping tension on it and it's not pulling, uh, tightening or loosening. It's kind of in the middle, hence neutral. But again, this is not an aircraft. Not even a low flying aircraft. All right, now that we got the exhaust manifolds all safety wired up, installed, um, I've got my new, can't see it and I didn't film it, but I got a new oil pressure sensor, excuse me, installed at the back of the block for the Dakota digital gauges that are going in this car. Um, I need to redo valve lash on both passenger side and driver side. So I'll go ahead and do that off camera. I'm not gonna bother running you through that. If you wanna see how to do valve lash, um, how to adjust valves, I think I did that uh, way back when I built this engine for the car. But uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and knock that out real quick. And then uh, what I'll probably do is just throw the engine back in the car and uh, I'll show you uh, installing the AOD transmission. So let's go ahead and knock that out. All right, as you can see, we got the engine back in. We gotta yank off the stock flywheel, excuse me, flex plate. So this is a 164 tooth flex plate, um, but it's got the wrong pattern for the AOD converter. So what you do is you go order a 28 ounce balance, 164 tooth flywheel. Uh, what I did is I ordered one for a 1988 uh, Ford F-250 with the 351 Windsor. The 351 Windsors and the 351 Clevelands all have a 28 ounce balance. So we're gonna go ahead and change that out real quick. So you get a three quarter inch socket you'll take those flywheel bolts out. Don't drop your block plate. All right, the flex plate we're using today, it's an ATP automotive. It's part number Z-105. So again, this is a 164 tooth flex plate with a 28 ounce balance on there. So make sure you get your block plate on there. You know, you might want to clean it up once you take it out because they're usually full of road grime. Slip your flex plate on. These do have a, a, a set bolt pattern where it bolts in, you, you can't just throw it on any direction. It will line up perfectly in a certain spot. So just turn it around till it lines up per perfectly. You want to, uh, I have reused flex plate bolts. They tell you not to. I'm not in this application. I'm putting ARP flex plate bolts back in there. When you do put those in, make sure you put a little red Loctite on the threads. You do not want this flywheel coming off because it will, it'll come right through the, the, the bell housing. There's a chance it can and take your feet off. So you don't want to do that. So. All right, the flex plate bolts I'm using are ARPs 200-2902. So that'll fit your uh, Fords and I think your Chevys as well. So take your 
your spacer plate here or your ring that was on the old one. Line that up. And go ahead, take your flex plate bolts, put a little bit of red Loctite on there, and then start threading them in. You wanna go around, put them all in there, and then we'll torque them. And I'll get you the torque specs here in a, in a second. All right, so the torque on these flex plate bolts is 75 to 85 foot-pounds. I'm gonna try and torque these, so it's gonna wanna twist. Ready? Yeah. You holding it? Yeah. Flip the ratchet the other way. There you go, ready? Yep. Okay. All right, now that the flex plates tightened, it's torqued. We're going to go ahead, I'm going to bring the transmission in here. I don't know how much you're going to be able to see, but it's just like every other transmission install. Throw it up to the, uh, to the block. Do not pull it in by tightening down the bolts. Make sure it matches up and mates flush by hand before you start torquing anything. I've already installed the torque converter on this transmission. You want to make sure when you put the torque converter in that you get a couple of clunks in there and spin it, and you want it past the inside of the, the bell housing mounting uh, face. You don't want the torque converter sticking out past there because that means it's not in all the way all right so we'll roll it in here i don't know how much you're gonna be able to see but we'll go ahead and uh we'll start getting this transmission in here Now that you got the transmission in, it's just kind of sitting here. I haven't put the transmission mount in yet, but you got to tighten up the torque converter nuts. I am running their Mr. Gasket torque converter nuts, part number 6717. So you'll tighten these down until they're pretty good and tight. All right, all four tor torque converter nuts are tightened up. We can go ahead and put the starter in. We can put the trans mount in and everything else. So let's go ahead and get that done. All right, now that you got the transmission hooked to the engine, you've got the torque converter bolted down. You got to put in the transmission cross mount and you have to put in the uh, transmission mount as well. Your factory three point style mount will not work on this car. You need to either fab a new cross member or just buy one. So this is the mount and cross member that I'm using on this car. The cross member is a Summit Racing part number SUM-770328. It's a tubular style. Um, the one thing I will tell you is on these mounts, these mounting holes here, I did have to elongate the holes to get them to match my car. The actual mount that I'm using is Anchor Mount 2448. It's just a factory style replacement mount. I do have polyurethane engine mounts on the car, but I'm just gonna run this uh, factory style transmission mount. I'm not too worried about running another polyurethane mount. So go ahead, slide it up in there. Put your cross bolts. In. And then you'll, uh, you'll mount your transmission bolts here. So we got our mount and we got our cross member snugged up. I still have to tighten up the actual connecting bolts for the uh, uh, cross member, but uh, that's it. Now we can go ahead and lower the jack out of the way and let's put the drive shaft in. 
All right, when switching to the AOD in these early Mustangs, the slip yoke that comes out of the FMX will not fit the AOD. So you have to pick up a new drive shaft slip yoke. Uh, this is not the one that they says fits. This is one I had on the shelf. This is a Spicer C2-3-1139. This does fit AOD transmissions. Um, we're gonna see if this will fit this one here. Uh, it looks like the U-joints are the same. So we're gonna try it anyway. Now it does call, I believe, the call out for the Mustang uh, for the AOD is a 3-3-2431X. So I don't know. I don't know what the difference is. Uh, it looks like it's a 1350 U joint versus this one's a 1330. So, but uh, we're going to see if it works or not. If nothing else, I'm going to go get a bastard U joint, to be honest with you, because I want to save 80 bucks by not having to buy a new yoke. So uh, let's get this old yoke off and then I'll tell you whether or not it fits this one or not. With my luck, it's not going to. And the reason I'm not changing the U-joint is this U-joint is in great condition. There's no slop in it. So I don't want to buy a new U-joint if I don't have to. But if I do, I do. All right, now that we've got the transmission installed, we got the rear mount in. It's bolted to the engine. we got the uh, flex plate bolted to the torque converter. We're ready to start hooking up all the accessory stuff like hoses and shift rods. So let's talk about shift rods for a second. Now, I ordered this shift rod originally uh, and it came to the house i don't remember who i got it from but uh, it, it was the cheapest one i could find and you definitely get what you pay for in this instance it's got this little box clip that slides over the end of the shift linkage for the floor shifter and it doesn't actually really connect directly to it there's nothing bolting to it it's just got a little press fit um like set screw on here and it looks like uh ray charles welded this thing with a banana and a marshmallow because the welds on this are garbage. Um, it's really cheaply made and it's it's junk. Uh, the one I did go get from Summit Racing, I uh, picked up uh, California Pony Cars. And I will tell you, this is leaps and bounds ahead of what that other piece of junk was. Um, it did also come, so this is part number TRA-643-746. This is the 1964 to 73 AOD shift linkage kit. Again, this is from California Pony Cars, and it comes with a massively uh, better shift linkage rod. And it also comes with um, the shift, whatchamacallit, the little shift rod that goes, I can slide it out of here actually goes in the transmission now I am running a different shift linkage than this one I've got the like infinitely adjustable one you can change the clocking all the way around you can also change uh, where the shifter bolts on to on the on the rod here so I'm not going to use this because I've already got my transmission together but uh, this has rod ends on both ends it's a seems like grade 8 rod it doesn't bend it doesn't twist and it's also both ends are adjustable where you can turn them in and turn them out on both ends this is massively uh, a massive improvement over that other piece of garbage that I had um, this was a little pricey I think it was $163 for this whole kit but uh, I'm gonna tell you right now looking at it it's definitely worth the money I could have fabric hobbled something together that would have worked but I'll be honest with you this works pretty darn good so We'll go ahead we're going to get this installed and i want to talk about your lines so i end up uh, for my transmission lines for the cooler lines i'm running a separate standalone transmission cooler in the front of the car that has dash 6 an fittings on it and i am i fabricated uh, steel braided teflon lines i don't like using the rubber lines for transmission fluid really i'll be honest with you, anything anymore i just try to run all this teflon line i know it's a bit more expensive um, but i put uh, two 90 degree ends, one on each end of it. And I'll show you the transmission cooler in a second. Like I said, it's mounted in front of the uh, AC uh, uh, condenser up front, uh, sitting there. And then I've got uh, the dash six uh, fittings in the side of the transmission, which I'll give you a part number on those here in a second. All right, the dash six fittings I'm using is dash six AN to quarter NPS thread. I'm using the Earl's fittings, the part number on those is 940006ERL. That's 940006ERL, those thread right into the side of the transmission. And then, like I said, I could run hard line. I know a lot of guys run hard line, but uh, I just, uh, I like the, the flex line. It's uh, easier to conform to the car. So let's go ahead. I'll show you the fittings here in a second. I'll, what I'll do is I'll just snap a picture and I'll put it over here somewhere and uh, 
show you the fittings and the side of the, the uh, transmission and then the, the front of the uh, oil cooler or transmission cooler in front of the car. All right, as you can see, I'm absolutely filthy, but we got the exhausts back in. Uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I got the shift rod back in and I'll get you in closer to that shift rod. Nice thing about that shift rod, like I said, other than the, the other piece of junk one, is they give you a bunch of extra length on the ends that you can trim down as you go to make sure you've got enough uh, rod length to uh, make all your throws. It is kind of a pain in the butt to set up to make sure it's, it's located in the right place. You are going to need a second hand. Otherwise, you're going to be in and out of the car a million times, making little uh, tiny, minute adjustments. So I had my son up in the, the car so he could throw it into each detent and make sure the transmission was in the correct detent. I think I've pretty much got it where I'm set at, though. Um, I'll show you. Let me get you off the stand here. All right, so you can see here. So I've got the TV cable um, bracket hooked up. Tighten down here, that's the other end of the shift linkage here. And you can see I've got that uh, really adjustable um, AOD uh, shift linkage. Um, I can't remember what part number it is, but I got from Summit Racing. It was pretty inexpensive. So you'll see I'll wrap it around here. Don't look at the Stevie Wonder welds on my exhaust. So up in here, you can see where it connects to the stock shift linkage coming out of the floor there. So that's where that rod is, and that rod is what actuates your shift uh, linkage. I did put some fire sleeve around the TV cable here because it gets so close to this exhaust here. I didn't want to melt that TV cable, so I went ahead and put some sleeving on there. All right, but that's pretty much it for the basement part of this uh, install. Like I said, the trans is in. Uh, I don't have my drive shaft in yet. That was a kind of a debacle. The uh, stock drive shaft I felt was just a hair too long. So what I did is I went and bought an aluminum drive shaft for this to have it cut down and and uh, uh, made specifically to match the car setup. I still got to change rear gears. I'm going to change rear gears right now. It's a 3.0 gear. I'm going to go to a 3.50 gear since I got overdrive now with the trans. I still got to fill the trans, but uh, other than that, we're done in the basement. So what I got to do now is go up, stop, go up top, put my uh, sniper throttle body back on, start hooking up the low car cables and all that. Um, I'll give you a part number for the low car cable kit. It's just their high tech uh, braided line AOD kick down setup. Um, but uh, I'll give you all the part numbers in the description when we're done at the end of this. But let's go ahead and let's get this car off the lift and start working on the top side. All right, I got the car pretty much all back together. I got the transmission in. The exhaust has been cut right about midway on the transmission because the new drive shaft I'm using is a bigger round diameter. Uh, so it's an aluminum drive shaft. So it's a little bit bigger than the old steel one was. So the exhaust was contacting it. So I had to cut that. Um, so I've got to get it to the exhaust shop, get a new exhaust put on this car, which it needed it anyway. It's got Flowmaster Super 40s on it, which are extremely droney at highway speeds. And I absolutely can't stand that. So I wanted to put new mufflers on the car anyway. Um, so I'm going to show you how to adjust the TV uh, cable pressure without the car running uh, because it's with no exhaust on it, it's just too loud. I've already said it. Um, but what you will need is you will need an oil pressure gauge or some sort of fluid pressure gauge uh, that goes at least up to 40, 45, 50 PSI. I set my TV line pressure at 35 PSI. Um, it's a pretty much stock 351 Cleveland. I'm not looking for performance out of this. I'm not gonna be drag racing this or, or road coursing it or anything like that. So I'll show you the gauge that I'm using. All right, so this is a relatively inexpensive. I think I paid 80 bucks for it from Summit Racing. I believe it's an OEM brand, and I'll put the part number over here somewhere, but it, uh, it goes up to 100 PSI. It's an oil pressure gauge. It has a eighth inch NPT fitting on here. It also comes with other many, a plethora, a menagerie of fittings. Um, you get 90 degree fittings and other fittings so that you can thread it into different ports. But what you want to do is you want to thread this gauge into the middle port on the passenger side uh, of the transmission, which is your TV line pressure. And they say you want to set your TV line pressure to 33 to 35 PSI or more if you're running performance transmission. I set my TV line pressure to 35 PSI. It's pretty much a stock transmission. Um, I have done a few small upgrades. I did a shift kit on there and I upgraded to a six clutch uh, uh, forward drum clutch, I think is what you call it, direct drive, something like that. Anyway, so, it, but again, this isn't, I'm not setting it up for performance, but I'll show you how to set up the line pressure real quick. So with the low car kick down cable comes this little aluminum tool. And what you're going to do is you're going to slide this in between the end of the uh, line ferrule and the kick down bracket on your carburetor and or EFI setup, EFI setup. So I'll show you that here right now. All right. So you can see the, here's the line ferrule here. You want to slip that in place like that in between the 
bracket that hooks up or the, the the cable connection that hooks up on your tv cable and the kick down bracket so you slide that in there you'll start the car let it get up to temperature you'll want it to be in neutral make sure it's in neutral and then when with this uh little adapter in here whatever it is tool in there you're going to pull on this cable until you see 35 psi 33 psi on your tv line pressure and then once you see that you'll tighten this down a little bit you'll pull this back out the car goes back to idle and you want to make sure that you see zero line pressure it'll take a little bit of practice to do it but it's not that hard it took me just a couple of minutes but if you don't set this right you will smoke your transmission all right, but that's it. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to show you driving the car because I don't have an exhaust on the car. Plus, I still got to do, a, I want to put a new rear gear in there. There's a 350 gear in there. I got a set of decoded digital gauges I'm going to put in the car, and I want to do that all right now while I've got the car down. Um, so I'll have to come back another time and, and drive the car for you with the AOD in it and tell you how I like it and give you a little bit of review. But again, that's it. I'll put, uh, I'll put part numbers and everything I used. Hopefully, this is a little bit of a, a help for you. Um, it, it's not a hard install. Like I said, I, I did cut my drive shaft. My drive shaft, I felt was just a hair too long so instead of cutting the stock style steel drive shaft i went and bought an aluminum aftermarket drive shaft um, and had that made for the car just because if i'm going to spend the money on something i want it uh, a little bit better than what the stock one was so anyway i appreciate you checking this out make sure to have a good day uh, appreciate you liking the page and, and checking out the videos and remember keep your head up and your stick on the ice